Friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Today on this episode of the Advanced Aesthetic Series, I'm talking about the idea of uniforms. How we could have a uniform in our wardrobe. And this is kind of a concept that exists maybe at the edge, the end of your developing advanced aesthetic. Because I think people who have a truly strong uniform have a really developed wardrobe, and I'm gonna get into it. Uniforms are the things of the army, communists, boarding schools. In their literal definition, uniforms show shared values, established camaraderie, remove unnecessary choice, and it also potentially smothers morals, ideas, expressions that are considered unorthodox or at least not in the mode of authority. What about any of that sounds like it exists in a really developed fashion wardrobe? Uh. I'll give you time to answer. What I'm talking about isn't the literal uniform, but it, it, it plays off of some of those ideas. We have literal uniforms that are worn by like the yeah, army, and right then now. we have the idea of a uniform as worn by an individual, a collection of pieces, garments, or whatever that they wear on a regular basis. Honestly, when I first like think of uniform, unfortunately, the first person that pops in my head is like Mark Zuckerberg and his t-shirts. This guy is like the worst dressed person on earth. Disgusting! What is going on with his hair? Why does he look so much like Data? How can somebody not help him with this? One of the things is he always wears like that gray t-shirt and I think the same pants. And he's explained that that is one less thing that he has to decide in the morning. That's one less thing he has to do. And in this context, it's like a uniform is trying to eliminate fashion from your life in the way that Mark Zuckerberg does it. A uniform in your wardrobe doesn't necessarily have to exist in that way. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tool to remove any like element of fashion or like any kind of element of creativity or expressing yourself with your daily wardrobe. But it does bring up one of the ideas of why I think uniforms exist in stylish people. Zuckerberg does it for convenience. Who else does it for convenience? The one, the only, Rick. Rick's uniform choice is a reflection of necessity. This is kind of a thematic thing we've heard from Rick a lot. He promotes the idea of being like swole and cut instead of wearing cool fashion pieces. He's living the life. He's living the dark shadow life. And frankly, you know, great thing about this uniform is, so you're invited to the White House, boom, throw a blazer on, perfect. Change nothing else. What about a designer who has dedicated their life essentially to a meditation on the white collar uniform. That being the suit and that designer being Tom Brown. Tom Brown had something interesting to say regarding the wardrobe. Asked on the subject, Tom Brown said, I think it's so liberating and so individual in a way. I think it takes a lot of confidence to be able to be true to a uniform. I think there's something really strong about that. I never thought I would reference my father as much as I do. He wore a suit every day because he just did. He never thought about clothing and you know, that was just something that he wore. I love to almost keep pushing the idea of almost uniformity and the idea of maybe not as much choice. I think there's something really refreshing when you know things don't change as much. So Tom Brown, obviously the avant-garde designer who has kind of reinvented the gray flannel suit a million times. And it's interesting to get his two cents about it. If you do know anything about Tom Brown, he kind of wears the same like suit pieces every day. He is known for wearing a uniform himself and his designs are basically like, it's like a sonnet. He's like constantly working within the structure of like this suit idea. He sees it not as something lazy or, you know, Zuckerberg-y. It's a strength of aesthetic. It's understanding your look and like being true to it on such a consistent basis that people recognize that that's like your uniform. 
And I think that he's right. Tom Brown's right in saying it's like, it's a strong move and that it's not necessarily an easy move. I think the moment of having a uniform is, it's end game, it's end game material. You gotta get to max level. But it's something I wanted to talk about because I think as you're working on your advanced aesthetic, this is kind of a theory, an idea that might pop in your mind. Like, what would my uniform be if I decided to adopt one? But it's not just designers, fashion designers, who do this, who kind of have their own personal wardrobes. A good, easy example would be Andy Warhol. In one of his biographies, he's described kind of like in his later years, a uniform that he stuck to a lot was blazer, shirt, tie, jeans. It's a very signature Warhol look. And the book describes how he would also carry around a bag with copies of Interview Magazine, the magazine that he started. And there's something so interesting about that. Warhol understood that he was existing as his art. He was existing as his brand. Well, I, I don't really think these are hate objects, and, uh... The consistency that he had in his aesthetic and being so weird and like, if somebody met him, he would give them a copy of his magazine. It's like he kind of really could comprehend what the personal uniform would do. It, it's not necessarily about being uniform with a bunch of people. It's about being uniform with your aesthetic kind of expression doing it over and over again, sticking in people's minds in the way that people who wear uniforms, it's like, I know exactly how they dress, I know what they look like, typically. I'm sure maybe you were thinking about one of the most famous, Steve Jobs. That guy wore a uniform in the beginning of Steve Jobs' career with Apple. The 1970s, if you look up pictures of him, he was dressed really like cool, cool guy, flashy. He didn't start wearing the signature black, people call it a turtleneck, but it's a mock neck. Just look at the neck. The Levi's in the um, 990s until after visiting Japan and visiting uh, Sony's headquarters. Something Steve Jobs noticed about Sony's headquarters was that everybody wore the same like technical vest thing. It, you know, it was like a vest that they might have worn under other clothing, but it had like this kind of cool futuristic look. And he asked one of the Sony executives and the executives explained like, well, you know, after World War II, uh, people didn't have a lot of money to buy clothing. And this idea of businesses kind of having a uniform for their employees took away the issue where they didn't have the right clothes to wear. And it started to create that sense of camaraderie. And so Steve loved the vest. He asked the Sony dude, so like who made these? They said, you know, this this new up and comer, Issei Miyake made all of the vests for Sony. So Steve Jobs apparently, boo 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 boo, called that Issei Miyake up, asked him to make some vests for Apple because he liked what Sony was doing. He liked the idea of it. So apparently Steve goes back to America He's got the vest in hand. He shows everybody at Apple, we're all gonna wear this. We're all gonna wear this vest by some Japanese designer, I don't know. And apparently they all booed him. They hated the idea. They didn't want to wear the same thing. If only they knew what grails they were giving away. So the relationship with Steve Jobs and Issei Miyake remained. He designed and made all of Steve Jobs' mock necks. So that's a flex. It's a subtle flex, but never forget that. I think that the idea behind this uniform is, you know, two things. For one, the mock neck, turtleneck, that makes you think of Andy Warhol. That makes you think of poets. It makes you think of art. And art is like Apple. The, the downstairs, the Levi's in the 990s, makes you think of classic American cool guy. The, you know, Levi's, he's the San Francisco bingo, bango, bongo. It's like the Apple PC commercials with Justin Long. He's like, cool, chill dude. And the thing I think about it is this. I, maybe at one point in my life, I will kind of feel like I'm ready for this. Right now, I don't want to dress exactly the same way every day. And I don't think you guys do either. Why are you watching this channel? What's up? But I think that there is potentially space for a uniform for like my wardrobe, my clothes. I want people to be able to identify certain things that I wear on such a regular basis that it's like 
kind of like my uniform. Right now, and this is why I'm wearing it, my uniform's kind of like this, these um, black crew neck sweatshirts, like this champion one. And this uniform is more or less built out of necessity as, as of this last year, as of 2020 really. But I think that as time goes on, my uniform will evolve out of more than just necessity, but a desire to live more aesthetically. So guys, for the homework for this advanced aesthetics episode, I'm keeping it cool, keeping it casual, you know, I guess we just started a new semester. So I would love it if you guys would actually comment down below who you think has a superb uniform. Classic it doesn't rock. have to be so rigid and consistent in the way that like Tom Brown's is, where it's like literally the same thing. It can be kind of a quasi uniform because I think that that is kind of a part of establishing like when you get to that point, when you're old enough and you decide to kind of create your own uniform, I think that it doesn't necessarily have to be, I have duplicates of the same thing. Maybe it does include that, but I think it, it means more or less like having very similar garments that might very well fulfill a very similar role. Ask yourself, what are your favorite pieces to wear? Like what's your favorite garment to wear? And if that garment, for whatever it is, however it works, if it kind of meets that intersection between it's this right, the, the thing you want to say aesthetically and it is functional, consider how you can kind of replicate that. It doesn't have to literally be the same garment and then you buy multiples of it. It can be a lot of that type of garment. Let's say, I don't know, maybe your thing is like uh, Alpha Industries Green Bomber. You're like, this is my favorite garment to wear. I love it. I could totally imagine you kind of buying multiple green bombers, especially ones inspired by Alpha Industries and having them in different rotations. As a uh, closing note, for anybody who did comment on my last video where I talked about the Rue Porter potential uh, channel merch, I'm working on it. Right now I'm waiting on some more samples from Rue Porter so I can kind of see exactly what I would do, kind of experiment. They're really having issues with fulfilling orders, so it's gonna, it's, it might take time. I might just go ahead and launch the kind of website portal early because my plan right now is I'm stoked that you guys might be interested in some merch. I think what I'm going to do is, frankly, it's all gonna be pre-orders. You order it, provide your email. I keep you up to date in terms of the pieces finally got here, I'm doing the customization, I'm not gonna give anything away, and then I'm sending it out. Right now, with how busy I guess Rue Porter is, it seems like it's going to take time. If I just do pre-orders, then I'll know exactly what sizes you guys want. I won't order more than I should, et cetera, et cetera. That is probably how I'm gonna do it, but stay tuned because I will provide the link when I'm done with the website. Otherwise, guys, catch you later.